watch the Star Wars holiday special I have. Mmm, talk about our first and Roblox gameplay, I must. Mmm, drink water, I must. <sighs> so the other day I watched the Star Wars holiday special for the first time, and it was very interesting. In this video, I shall summarize the plot of the holiday special, and I shall tell you my thoughts on it, and my thoughts on each scene, and yeah. So, the plot's basically Han Solo and Chewbacca, they're trying to get home in time for Life Day, and Life Day's basically their equ equivalent of Christmas. So, just like Christmas, you get presents, and you do like, you hang out with the ones you love, and, and it's also similar to Hanukkah, I believe, because in the end, they light candles, and they, they do prayers together, but unlike Christmas, uh, it appears that they don't have their version of Santa. Honestly, this movie wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. That's probably because I watched the movie with very low expectations. Even though it's also kind of not good at the same time. So, um, the movie basically starts off with showing Chewbacca's family on Kashyyyk. And they have this cool home on like a tree, like a big tree house. It's really nice, but it seems like very scary to live there because... Cause you can just jump off the balcony and kill yourself. At least that's an easier way to do it. So that's kind of scary. And Chewbacca's family consists of Mala, Ichi, and whatever this little punk's name is. In my opinion, this scene, it was kind of boring, but it was also kind of interesting at the same time. Because normally in like the Star Wars movies, like the original tri trilogy, prequel, and the new trilogy stuff, you don't really see the lives of middle class citizens and I really like how they kind of like showed what regular Wookiee life was like and it also showed like their technologies, the stuff they watch, like cooking shows and all kinds of those interesting things. So it's very interesting to kind of like see the lives of the citizens of the galaxy. Even though the lives of citizens are varied because there's so much species and so much like societies in this big galaxy. So, but it's nice to see like one part of life in the galaxy. Because she goes into lockdown due to rebels. I'm guessing it, it's because of Han and Chewbacca. Because like they're chased by a bunch of like Imperials. So that's probably why. Han and Chewbacca don't show up in time. So they decide to contact Luke. And for some reason, Luke looks very creepy. He looks very bizarre. He looks like a dead body in a funeral with a bunch of makeup caked up on his face. And Luke says that they should have arrived at their home a long time ago. And during this time, they're, they're evading the Imperials. And after this, it again shows life at Chewbacca's household. And this scene is interesting. So this is one of my favorite scenes, the baking scenes. So the baking scene, like... So Mala, she uh, watches this uh, this celebrity chef, which at first, like, you may think that they're a regular person, but then you start seeing multiple, like, two more arms show up, and then it gets interesting. Like, this scene's very interesting, and it also gets very extreme to it. It starts off calm, right, the tutorial, and then all of a sudden, they're like, stir, whip, stir, whip, stir, whip, beat, and they're just like, they're getting very into the cooking, which is... Epic. Just like how we get into my Honda Odyssey. And that was a very intense scene. And that was actually the scene that made me enjoy the Star Wars Holiday Special a little more because it it kind it honestly like bored me up to that point because it was kind of boring. Like it was interesting, but at the same time, no cool stuff was happening. It was just kind of boring and like it just felt long. So after this, they get presents from their trader friend. Mala gets like something, I don't really know. She gets like a bunch of bags and stuff. Lumpy gets some device with this laggy tutorial, which I think we, which we later find out that it's some Imperial translator device thing. Ichi gets a very interesting virtual girlfriend simulator. Yeah, he's just like a Redditor. He's unable to find love. Probably because everyone makes fun of him. He's kind of old. And the only resort he has is a virtual girlfriend simulator. So this scene was a very interesting but bizarre scene too. Like, so this scene, it also was, it was very interesting but also kind of weird. I feel like this scene would have 
escalated very quickly if the family wasn't there. Probably would have been something you'd find on another website. So after that, they contact Leia and C-3PO to see if they know where Han Solo and, Lu and Chewbacca are. And they also are unaware of their locations. After this, the Imperials raid their home looking for rebels. And since, it, since the place is under, under lockdown, lockdown. And this scene was very interesting. Like, it was like a tense scene for me, in my opinion. Because I was like, oh no, they're gonna like find out, they're, they're gonna find out that that's actually Chewbacca's household. And it was like a very tense scene, so that was nice. And the traitor who was with them, he was helping uh, calm down the situation and like prove to them that they're not lab they're not rebels. And by the way, the traitor, he supports the rebels, which is not really legal in the galaxy. And they stumble upon a device. It's like some computer thing. And the traitor basically like shows it to him. And it's basically like some like device where you can like see this band perform like a hologram thing. And this scene, it was kind of, it felt kind of long. Like the music, it's good, right? Like I could tell that the uh, band put their heart and soul into the music, but it was just so long and boring. Like I don't, I don't want to see like some band play music for like seven minutes in a Star Wars movie. I want to like see cool like action, like rebels and Imperials fighting or something, or even like Jedi's fighting. Jedi's and Sith Lords fighting. That would have been more interesting. Instead, they just they put a bunch of songs in there. And this movie, it's kind of like they turned Star Wars into a musical, but it's a very trippy musical. It feels like you're on an acid trip. It feels it feels like you're on Death Sticks, right? So if you guys need a reason on why you should not do Death Sticks, this shall be the reason. So after that long scene, the movie turns into a cartoon. So they just, the live action part starts and they just turn it into a cartoon. I don't know why. Were the actors not available or something? I don't really know. In the cartoon, Luke and Leia, they're in a rebel base, I believe. And they're basically trying to get into contact with the Millennium Falcon. And they do get contact for like a few seconds, right? And then they lose connection. And... So Luke and R2-D2 and C-3PO go into the Panama system and they land on a weird moon. It's a very jelly-like moon. On this moon, they stumble upon Boba Fett. So Boba Fett agrees to help him like find Han Solo and Chewbacca. And they stumble upon the Millennium Falcon. And while they get there, Luke, he uh, faints all of a sudden. So they find out that... He got contaminated by this sleeping virus, which only affects humans. And Han was actually affected too, right? So, like, the remedy for the sleeping virus for humans is to get blood flow to the head. So, to do that, they usually hang the infected upside down. So, they both were hanged upside down until while Boba Fett went to get medicine for the sleeping virus, even though he actually contacted Vader. Since we all know that Boba Fett worked with Vader. So Boba Fett gets the Imperials after them and they get chased. And Luke and Han wakes up and Han also looks weird for some reason. Like he looks like he's recovering from a cocaine addiction. Maybe he is, right? We don't know what's happening behind the scenes. And they find out that Boba's bad, even though Chewbacca knew that Boba Fett was bad. And then Boba Fett, he leaves and then... And then they go back into live action. So in the live action part, Lumpy, he sets up the um, machine. So it's like a translator machine to talk to a Morphean. But the thing is, the tutorial is very buggy. So this scene, it was both funny, boring, and interesting at the same time. Like, all the bugs were funny. The people were, like, like moving around. At the same time, the uh, Imperials, they have to, like, watch what's happening on Tatooine because of the lockdown. And it basically goes up. And this scene basically shows, like, stuff that's happening in Tatooine. And in this scene, we're introduced to new characters. So we're introduced to a waitress that works there. And while she's working, some old guy with a hole in his head tries to, like, flirt with her and tell him how much he loves him he's basically flirting with her he's basically like talking about like how much he loves him and stuff and and how much of an incel he is to try to like win her over and at the time since Tatooine's put into lockdown it's time to like leave the cantina so the waitress tries to kick everyone out of the cantina but everyone's hesitant just like children around a meatloaf so the waitress has to sing another song 
a goodbye farewell song. This movie has way too many songs. So after that long song, oh, that rhymed, the Imperials had to, like, leave the house. So they just leave one stormtrooper to stay at the house to make sure, like, to see if, like, the other person in the household is a rebel. And while he's guarding, he walk he walks on on Lumpy, assembling the Imperial message machine, which keeps saying return to base. So he gets caught. He destroys the machine like a nonce destroying a preschooler and then they go outside and then Chewbacca and Han finally arrive so that's amazing so they knock the stormtrooper off the um, balcony which is a very long fall and after that Chewbacca Han and Chewbacca's family finally reunite which is a very interesting scene because after Han leaves Chewbacca greets his family and stuff and while that happens Mala gives him bedroom eyes and Keeps staring at him. Chewbacca shoots her bedroom eyes back. They get closer. Their blood pumping. The heart beating faster and faster. Each second. Getting closer. They're getting... Their temperatures heating up. Heating up like me inside my beautiful Honda Odyssey. They then go closer and closer. Lock eyes. And hug. Yeah, they just hug. So after that very interesting scene, they then like light candles, hang out each other and do life day stuff. They basically like, ass- and they assemble. And at the end, Leia gives a singing performance, which I'm pretty sure Carrie Fisher was coked up like crazy during this scene. And after that performance, the movie finally ends. So to be honest, the movie wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. But that's because... But that's because I had very low expectations for this movie. The idea of the idea of watching this movie came after I watched Elvis the Alien's review of the Star Wars Holiday Special, and and since then I forgot the plot and stuff. But but I also like heard other people talk about how bad it was, and the and honestly, and when I got, I thought that the video would probably be me like ranting about everything about about the movie and. Talking about how I wasted like one hour and forty minutes on it, but in all in all seriousness, it's not like it. It's boring. It's boring at times, but it also wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. But it also wasn't great. Like the thing is, I really like how it like showed a little a little more of like regular life on the Star Wars universe, on the galaxy. It also showed us an inside of what Wookiee life would be like. The regular Wookiee life I'm talking about. And honestly I like that because like in the I feel like the regular people in the Star Wars universe are very underrepresented. Even though like the thing is if like there was a movie about them it'll be boring. But like it's just nice to like see regular life pop up and also they they have a regular household, right? Like usually houses in the Star Wars universes are either very poor or something or they're lavish they're very like not poor it was very interesting and also it was interesting to see the technology in the star wars universe because this star the star wars holiday special also like shows us more of like the type of technology the citizens of the galaxy use and also kind of showed like the type of celebrities they have like for example the uh celebrity chef chef and also like the type of music too it's very interesting to see the more cultural side of Star Wars, so I found that very interesting. But, like, the thing is, the problem with the Star Wars Holiday Special was that it's so confusing and, like, it seems, like, so horribly planned because, like, the actual story is, like, not a bad story, right? It's Chewbacca and Han, they're trying to get home for Life Day, right? But, like, it just gets ruined by the scenes being so boring and la- and lackluster and, and very mediocre, not interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if some... The problem is, it also gets confusing when it just, like, turns into a cartoon all of a sudden. And also the animation, it's not bad, but they just animated Han Solo in the weirdest way. Like, I don't know if it was intentional or not. I really wanted to know how much coke these guys did. Because I feel like a lot of coke was used in the making of this movie. So all of the uh, singing and songs and stuff, like... No hate to the artist, you guys did good. I know you guys like put your heart and soul into that and stuff and you guys did a lot of rehearsals. But like the thing is, I feel like it was very like unnecessary because we don't expect to see like a musical or anything when we see Star Wars. We just want to see Star Wars, right? So this really felt very un-Star Wars like and 
honestly, like, I understand the hate, right? But the thing is, I don't really hate it that much, probably because I had low expectations and stuff. But also, like, in some parts of the movie, it, like, some parts of the movie went by very fast, right? But usually those parts of the movies were, like, the very weird parts, like that virtual girlfriend scene. And some of the stuff I didn't understa- understand. It's probably because I didn't really watch the movie enough, but, like, the movie isn't interesting enough to watch again like it doesn't really have any replay value to it right like it's not those it's not those like type of special movies you have in your heart that you'd like watch over and over again and you would like enjoy it each time like this movie i honestly don't really want to watch this movie ever again so honestly this movie if i were to give it a score out of 10 i think i would give it a 4 out of 10 because i get like all the uh, dedication to the movie right like everyone who did their part did great and I could tell everyone really worked hard on it. It was just badly made.